Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to hear more about all that Skillshare has to offer. Hey guys, welcome back to Pencil Stash. I'm Rachel. Today, we are going to be continuing our little vignettes of birds in Joanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder. So in the past three videos, we've tackled the Cardinal with his beautiful kind of red foliage and his beautiful mohawk. We did the Blue Jay here with these beautiful like teal and kind of Granny Smith apple colors to complement. We've done I don't even know what kind of bird this is. This is, I think, the European robin. Somebody was nice enough in the comments to uh, call out what kind of bird this was, or at least the one that I colored. And these beautiful autumnal colors. And then today, we are going to be tackling our last piece on this page. And I don't know what kind of bird this is. And so we get to choose. We actually get to decide because this one is a little bit ambiguous. I mean, the others were as well. We probably could have, you know, taken any liberties that we wanted to. But this one in particular, I feel like it's not immediately recognizable. And so what I did was actually go on Pinterest and I just kind of started looking at different kind of birds. And I ran across a goldfinch. And I think that this particular one might be a European goldfinch as well. I seem appear to be attracted to European birds. Um, but it has this beautiful kind of red, like bit around his face. And then he's mostly brown and kind of white. And then he has these like beautiful black tail feathers with like a splash of yellow and these kind of like white dots down the back here. And so he's very just kind of visually interesting. So I was like, that's it. That's the one that I want to color. And that's why I'm always kind of pushing reference photos, you know, not only just to have something to look at to kind of help you with placement, but also just to give you a little bit of inspiration. Like I never would have thought to do a goldfinch. So this is definitely going to be a new one for me. I have my reference photo up so that we can uh, kind of have good starting points. So before we get started, just a reminder, if you guys are new here and you like what I'm doing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'd really, really appreciate it. I'm almost to 50,000 subscribers and it would be so cool to kind of hit that milestone. And if you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. It's really like a great way to tell the YouTube algorithm that you're liking my content and it'll kind of help it, you know, kind of push it to new folks and leave me a comment. I would love to know like what bird do you think that this is? If you were coloring this page and you had to decide, you know, do you guys have any other kind of suggestions or recommendations for any of these birds? Actually, that would be interesting. Uh, but this one in particular, let me know down in the comments. So let's get started. So the first thing that I like to do is actually look at my reference photos and then pull some colors. Now I'm specifically choosing to use kind of a limited color palette. I don't think I need a whole bunch of variation here, but I can always choose additional ones on top of these kind of core colors that I chose. And I am just kind of thinking like, where should I start? I, I think I should start maybe with the black area around the beak and then kind of bleed into the red. And we can sort of start from his face and then kind of work our way outward. So I actually pulled two colors. I pulled 90% cool gray and just straight black. And so I think I'm just gonna start with the 90% cool gray and it's got a nice fairly sharp tip on it. And what the, oops, I'm already, already messing up. Um, what the uh, reference photo kind of shows is like definitely a sort of connection, sort of bridge between the beak area and the eye. So I'll start there and then just like a really kind of small little halo around the beak. And I'm trying not to create too many kind of harsh edges there because these are all feathers. And so I just kind of want to maybe have some, some lines here that kind of, and then it kind of ends here at the eye. So I think that's all I'm going to do right there. Maybe just a little bit of black, just kind of in the, in the center there. And then we'll kind of let it end or like push outwards with the gray. And then I want to grab red and I pulled two reds. This is permanent red and Scarlet Lake, both from Prismacolor. And I'm gonna start with the permanent red. And this sort of goes like all the way down his chin <clears throat> and then kind of comes 
up to the eye in something kind of like this and then goes back on the head and this this shape here actually works out quite nicely because it just goes a little bit beyond the eye but it's definitely kind of all over his forehead now I'll take the Scarlet Lake and I'm just gonna add in some just kind of natural um, lines essentially that are sort of mimicking the shape where I would see maybe some feathers just to give it a little bit of texture. Now with Crayola White, I'm going to just sort of uh, never mind. All right, we're not using that one. I only grabbed it because my Prisma color is like teeny tiny. So I'm gonna have to replace that soon, but I have a pencil extender. So this will do us for now. And I'm just gonna kind of mimic the rest of the shapes and I know it's impossible to see and I'm really just kind of putting and I'm just kind of putting this down just to have a little bit of that medium for the other uh, colors to actually play around with and so that is really kind of where the white lies on his head now we're going to go back to our blacks and the white is between kind of the red and the black here so I'll just put this in sort of a like a helmet kind of shape around his head here. I'm not sure what to do with that shape. We'll just leave that for now. And on top of his head, the red actually goes right into black. So we'll do that. But then the white kind of has like a this kind of shape. There we go. Just has like a little bit of white on the side there. And I'll do the same over here. Looks like he's got like lamb chops, or, like mutton chops. <laughs> All right, here's the Prismacolor Black. And I'm just going to go over, just like we kind of did with the red, I'm just going to go in and just sort of draw in some texture with our black and see how that goes. So the dark gray that we kind of put down first is just sort of a foundational underneath layer and then this one is really the one that's going to kind of give us our texture. I feel like I'm coloring like a 70s Elvis looking bird. <laughs> I'm definitely getting that vibe and I'm not hating it. I'm not mad about it. All right now in my reference photo the only other thing that I really liked about the goldfinch is that they have a little bit of this like almost like what would you call this? Like a just sandy kind of brown color. Just a little bit in this area around his head. So it's just very faint, but I am going to put that in there. And the goldfinch beak is white. Now, what I think I'm going to do actually, though, is that um, they actually have larger beaks than this one, but that's okay. And they do have a little bit of like, outline around it. So I think I'm gonna do the same, just with a brown. And then maybe just kinda refine that with my gel pen. And final step, I think, is just to put in the eye. And I'm just using my Cool Gray 90% to just kinda color that in. And then I'll go back in with my white gel pen and just put a little bit of a highlight. I just think it looks much more natural like this rather than kind of leaving it the way that the artist, the coloring book artist drew in for us. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is actually put in my yellow, just because I do think that it's a very striking feature of the bird. And so I really don't want to kind of phone that in. Now, I'm just looking at my reference photo. It kind of looks like maybe this area is yellow with like a little, kind of like shape like this, like the black kind of comes down a little bit. And I think, I think that works. And this is Crayola yellow. It's just a straight yellow. 
And what I like about this is that it's just super bright. And then I'm going to actually accent it with this Crayola Golden Yellow because it is also super bright and just very striking. And I think that these two colors sort of layer together will do us just fine. And there really isn't a lot of variation or kind of texture in the Goldfinch reference photo. So I'm just gonna add that feature of yellow and see how it goes, call it a day and come back if, back if we need something else later. All right, now the rest of the wing is just straight black. So I'm just gonna go in up here and I'm kind of gonna stop the wing probably on this feather. I think these are a little bit more of like the breast feathers. I'm just gonna go right up against that yellow and then just kind of stop and like maybe kind of transition it into there, but nothing, nothing too dramatic. And again, this is just our base layer. And then I'll go back in and just add a little bit of texture with black. I'm not really liking this shape right here. I'm not sure if I should maybe like go down a little bit more into the yellow. Because my, my inspiration photo has this really neat sort of shape to the wing, but it's not the way that our bird is drawn here. So I might have to be okay with that. I might kind of cover these tips up too. And that's okay. That's why I actually prefer to color less up front because I can always add more. And thankfully we can kind of cover that with the black, but I just want to make sure that this yellow shape is just nice and kind of interesting. Okay. That's a little bit better. I don't, I don't hate it. Now the tail feathers here are where it's going to get a little bit interesting because the little kind of circular shapes on here are very bright, very white. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of do the same kind of all over black and then I'll actually go back in and add the white with my gel pen. So I will just do the same here. All right, now the actual reference photos kind of show the white splotches almost like a Warshak kind of ink blot drawing. It's kind of like symmetrical on either side and they're just very splotchy so I'm just going to draw some circles and I might kind of have to like redraw some of these just to add in a little bit of opaqueness as we go. This isn't really what it looks like but I'm just kind of reinterpreting it. All right, now the rest of the bird is just a very kind of run-of-the-mill kind of brown, like a very light brown color. It almost kind of reminds me of like a puppy. Um, so I'm gonna go over this with both taupe and antique brass. And we'll do taupe first. And I think I'm just gonna do kind of the breast area and then leave this down here in more of a white. Then I'll take the antique brass and just add in again some just very blunt kind of lines just to again mimic that feather motif and i am again still kind of following the curvature that our existing drawn in feathers have and then i'm actually going to take dark brown and i'm just going to do the same but with smaller little strokes especially on this under layer <clears throat> And then I actually want to go back in with my gel pen and I'm just going to add to this a little bit with some, oh no, it doesn't want to work. Let's try a jelly roll. Use a jelly roll and I'm just going to go in and add just a little bit of white kind of feathering as well. A little bit of harvest gold for the feet. And we are almost done with my little goldfinch. And we'll just go over those with dark brown to just add in a little shadow. Now I'll take the white and go over the belly. And again, this is just to sort of add a little bit of this medium down. 
And then I'll go back in with taupe because it's never like totally white. And I'm just gonna put like a very light layer. All right, one nail polish change later, and I think I wanna go back in with my white um, gel pen. And I just wanna do something with these black feathers. I'm just not quite happy with them in terms of like they're just looking a little lackluster to me. So I'll just kinda go in and maybe add some of those same little, just like, I don't even really know what to call them, just like little little hash marks, um, dashed lines here, and just kind of add in a little bit of texture, and we'll see what we get. I don't think we need it much up here, but I just want to highlight maybe just on the crown. And I don't want to take away too much from what's down there, but maybe we'll just put some here. Okay. I think that's a little bit better. We will reevaluate. Now, kind of onto the background. I'm kind of thinking not only about this little vignette, but also all of the other ones. And just in terms of like what colors I should use, if I should try to do something interesting with uh, like the color palette. We don't have a lot of room in the background, which is probably a good thing. Definitely not something that uh, we can probably pack a lot of creativity into, but there's definitely an opportunity here with these berries and the leaves. And I'm just trying to kind of figure out what color scheme I want. So I am actually going to go back to Pinterest and perhaps pull out a little bit of a color palette so that I can just maybe get a little bit of inspiration. I'll see if I can find something. All right, I have an idea and it might be a little bit divergent from our color palette of our bird, but I think that's okay, just so that we can kind of have the bird stand out a little bit. And what I think I want to do is maybe some like dark purples, kind of like um, like a, like a mid-tone, like Dahlia purple, and maybe some dark purples on the leaves. And then maybe we'll do the berries in like orange and maybe some like dark kind of burgundy colors, and then maybe a pink sky. And let's kind of start that I'm gonna maybe start just dipping my toe in the water with maybe the purples and then we'll see kind of where it takes us. So I pulled a couple of purples and I'm just gonna kind of experiment with these. So my first one is grade lavender and let's kind of see what we get here. I'm just gonna put this into maybe just this kind of center location here and then I'll switch to Parma Violet. And I'm just gonna go around that highlight and maybe just a little bit kind of into that shape. And we'll just sort of build upon this. And this is just very much my style. I like kind of a, a gradient of, of several different colors within the same family. So I've kind of gone around that center section. And then I wanna go in with Dahlia Purple. And I'm just gonna go in here along the edges maybe to like here. And then I'm gonna try to blend it outward and then I'll have the darkest color just sort of be at the very edge. Here's violet. And again, I'm just gonna go along the very edge here and start kind of simple and then we'll see what we get. And then maybe just a little bit under these berries where it might just create a little bit of a, a shadow or like a dark spot. <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna go back in with that gray lavender color and I'm just going to actually use this to blend a little bit. And I'm just going over the entire surface in some very tight circular motions. And we're essentially just kind of softening the transition areas. Okay. I definitely like that. I do maybe want to go one color darker, and I think that that's probably going to be black grape. And I'm just going to run this along the very edge. And maybe just a bit into these crevices. And maybe we'll do just a little bit more Parma Violet. And I think I really want to use more of my gel pen this round, so I think I might try to do most of the time this works really well over colored pencils and then sometimes it just does not want to cooperate. There we go. I think I'm just gonna do some of my 
kind of dots and dashes. Might have to go over it twice. It's just, uh, I think it doesn't like going over the, the blended parts as much. Got them. And it definitely shows up better over dark colors. So I think I'm definitely going to continue this motif across the other leaves, but actually before I do that, I think I do want to go back in and I really like the way that we kind of popped out some of these leaves on the other vignettes. So let's do the same over here. And I think we'll kind of keep it pretty simple actually. Like we'll do this one and I'm getting brave. I'm just going right in with my Sharpie. I'm not even using a, using a pencil first. And what will actually be nice is this one actually gives us some opportunities to um, kind of finish these leaves out and then just kind of add that, this little guy. And then I think I might even do some of these circles. This one over here. And then I think we'll continue this on and maybe some of these leaves down here. That's great. I like it. I think that's good. We'll do the rest of the leaves now. Do you know it's actually working pretty good? So I did my first layer in my Signa Uniball gel pen, but it was just like not really working too good. So I actually went over it with my Sharpie chalk marker just to kind of see if I could get a little bit more of an opaque look. And I'm just trying to go over it exactly as I did with my gel pen, and it's working pretty good. It is turning a little pink, which is funny, because it didn't with the gel pen, but I don't hate that. I'm all right with that. I do have a really, really fat tip on here, so it is a little bit harder to get a nice fine line and a fine dot, but it'll be okay. All right, I am liking our purple leaves. I think that came out really nice. It's definitely a departure from, I think, like the color story of our bird, but I, that's okay. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to do with him. I, I really like the goldfinch kind of color palette and the motif, but when it came time to do in the background, I just didn't want to stick to like a super realistic, like green leaves, just because I had done it kind of over here. So just wanted to do something different and that's okay. Um, I am going to continue with my a little bit different sort of theme and I'm going to do these berries in an orange sort of palette. So I literally have orange and pale vermilion and I think I'm just going to go super simple and I'm just going to do an orange sort of highlight, a little circle right there, and then I'll follow it up with pale vermilion and this is orange but it is a little bit of a red orange so I'm gonna see if it's different enough to just kind of bring a little bit and I'm I'm using a variety of different pressures with this just to get a little bit of a different color like I started light and now I'm kind of putting a little bit more pressure on right around the edges and I like that I think that's a nice combo I'm wondering if I might even want to use this because I do want to use a little bit more kind of white highlights on this one just because I, I haven't used them on any of these others. So I might go in with our white Sharpie and just kind of add in a little little highlight here with our white paint pen. And yeah, let's see, uh, let's see how these other ones do. I definitely like that. I think the only thing I might do is maybe just grab a dark red, maybe like mahogany red. Let's see here. I'm gonna use mahogany red just to kind of go a little bit deeper along my non-highlight edge. And that's perfect. That is just enough, just enough. And we'll do that across the board. I am really liking this combination. I think this is coming out really, really nicely. Now I have to say when I did go over the highlight area with my white Sharpie, I was getting a little bit of fade. So I was kind of letting the fade dry. And then if you go back in over it, it'll kind of go over it a little bit more matte than it did on that first layer. So not only was I kind of putting down a layer, I was kind of putting down two. So just, just a little bit of 
extra brightness there with the two layers. Now with these little kind of, uh, I don't wanna call them vines, but these, these little branches with the tiny little leaves, I think I wanna leverage this uh, like dark mahogany color here. I think that'll be nice. And it's so thin that I think I'm just gonna use this color kind of all over. I'll see if it needs maybe an edging of maybe like black raspberry, that might be nice. So let's kind of see what we get here. Maybe I'll do this one. So I'm just gonna do like a really simple all over layer. And you know, these little uh, parts that I kind of did like above the line there, the, the lines don't really bother me. So I'm not really worried about trying to hide them. It is what it is, but I definitely like the composition of them kind of peeking up outside the circle. Oh, and I have a different idea for the background, which I'll share in a little while. So here's black raspberry. Maybe I'll just kind of go along one edge. And just for fun, I don't know if I'm gonna do like both. I might do opposites. Like on this side, I'll do the top. And then on this side, I'll do the bottom. And then if I need to, I can always go back over it with the mahogany just to fill in some of these little areas. And then this might be a little fat, but we'll kind of see. I'm just gonna add a couple little dots as I go. All right, we're in the home stretch. And I think I have come up with something different for the background. I was originally thinking pink, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I kind of want to go dark and I kind of want to go like dark blue because if I go any darker than that, I think that the wings of our little bird friend might uh, disappear a little bit. And so I think I might go dark blue and then I think I might add a little bit of purple over that or a little bit of kind of dark gray. So we'll kind of see what it needs. But the very first thing I'm gonna do is put down this dark indigo in at least this top section and just kind of test it out and see what I get. And I'm gonna try and get this nice and sharp just to get into these little crevices here. And unfortunately, I always feel like Prismacolor and like all of the um, colored pencil brands like don't have a navy. Like it kind of drives me a little crazy. Navy's one of my favorite colors and there really isn't like a nice true navy. Even in the, even in the, um, Crayola, there's a little bit closer, but I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe maybe we'll add that over top of this. Um, but Crayola is definitely the closest. But in the Prismacolor, this this seems to be the closest to navy that I can get. Ooh, I found my Crayola outer space color, and that is kind of the darker of the navy blue versus the. This is more of like a blue black. This is more of a true navy. So I might use my outer space or I might use navy. Let's see. Let's try navy first just because we can always go darker. Yeah, this isn't really, I mean it is. It's definitely darkening it up. Maybe what we'll do is navy over this and then maybe just like along the edges we'll kind of add in some either dark gray or this outer space color just so it's not one flat color. Let's see what we get here. Oh no, I kind of like this. Ugh, I really don't want to do three layers, but we might be doing three layers. At least there isn't that much background to do, but this is definitely the color that I was going for. Whew. All right, three grueling layers of different blues later. I really like the way that this came out. Now, I do want to do just a little bit of dots even along the background, that's kind of been the theme of this is just kind of adding those little white highlights that I love. So I think I'm gonna keep it simple, but we'll kind of see how it, how it goes. And I don't really have any preconceived ideas here. I'm just kind of going with the flow. Cause I didn't want to do like stars. Cause I mean, that doesn't make any sense. That's not, that's not what I'm what I'm going for here. So we'll just keep it, keep it kind of simple. And maybe just kind of outline our little birdie, put a couple up here. Now the other thing that I might want to evaluate is do I do another kind of border? I did something on each of these. I did the gold on the 
cardinal, I did the little gold kind of dots on the blue jay, and then I did these little like dashed sewing lines on our robin. So the question is, do we do something else with our goldfinch? And I think we should do something, but I don't know what that is. Um, I kind of like this shape right here. Like I kind of want to do something right here, maybe all the way up until this point. And then maybe another one over here, but I don't know what that is. All right, you know what? I did some homework. Nothing feels right. So even though I feel like I should because I did it on the other ones, if something doesn't feel right, then maybe I shouldn't. So I'm just gonna leave it and that's okay. Um, I definitely love the way that this one came out. I think that this might be my favorite actually across all of them. They're all very different, which I actually kind of set out to do. I didn't want them all to be the same. I didn't want one to inform the other one. So that probably answers my frame question, but I wanted them all to sort of stand on their own and not be like dependent upon one another. So I think I accomplished my goal and I definitely love the color palette. I like the dark background and I just love adding my little dots and dashes in white. It's just very much my style and makes me very, very happy. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed not only this page and this little goldfinch here, but the entire sort of, you know, taking one little kind of bird one week at a time and turning one coloring page into a bit of an effort for different ways. So I do want to take a moment actually to stop and thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. It is definitely sponsors like Skillshare that keep the lights on here at Pencil Stash. So thank you so much for watching and clicking on those links and taking advantage of some of the super cool stuff that they have to offer. So stand by for a message from them. And until next time, happy coloring. Bye-bye. Thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Now, if you like learning from me today, you're going to love learning from all the talented creators on Skillshare's platform. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes in design, art, business, so much more. If you want to improve your knowledge on any topic, Skillshare has a class for you. Like this class, From Sketch to Modeling with Jessa Pickbrenner. Now, I know you guys know I have an Etsy shop. I make stands to display those cool mini ears that everybody wears around the Disney parks. I think it's so fun to display them and just kind of have them around your house so, you know, can bring a little bit of joy. Now, I originally started to make these out of wood and it was a little bit prohibitive. And I got a 3D printer and I was very excited. I knew I'd be able to make these things really easily and very custom with a 3D printer, but I had no idea what I was doing. I had never used one before. I had never designed in 3D you know, before, so I needed a place to go to kind of figure this out. So I went to Skillshare, I took this class, and it's incredibly helpful to have somewhere to go to kind of teach you a new skill. And Skillshare has definitely helped me do that on more than one occasion. Now, premium membership gives you unlimited access to classes, communities, and workshops that are just right for you and your learning goals. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for Pencil Stash viewers. The first 1,000 viewers to click the link below in the description will get a free trial of premium Skillshare membership. And with all the growth potential that these classes have to offer, that is a fantastic investment in yourself and your personal development. Act now for this special offer and start learning with Skillshare today.